Hi everybody. Welcome back. My name is Lynn and I'm Pretty Paper Craft 67. Today we've I've come back with part three of the craft with me um, for the junk journal ephemera folio. So we're just going to jump straight in and, and get this done. Um, where we left off in part two, we had created all of our pockets for our centre. We had papered up our flip out envelopes. Um, and I was going to show you how I do this side um, diagonal side pocket here. So that's really easy. I just use book pages from my glue book and um, I simply just decide in which direction I want my <coughs> diagonal to be. So that will flip like that. So I want my diagonal pocket to sit facing to the left. So yeah, I just grab my um, book page and I simply just fold it down so that this folded piece and the side piece meet. And that creates your diagonal. Um, <clears throat> with this one here, I will have to cut it down a little bit just to fit in that area so that's pretty easy I'm just going to cut it to about there just eyeball it and just trim that down like that simple as and then um, just with that diagonal fold I'll just glue that down to secure it in place and just remove this out the way for a minute I'm just going to glue that down, just a little bit of glue, because I'm just tacking it, because I will come back and sew. And I'll just give that a really good burnish. And then I've just got a scrap of paper left here from the kit, um, the Tristan's Lady kit. And it will be, the, the text will read upside down, or, or, or rather vertically, but I don't mind that. I think that's all right. And I might use it that way, because I want to get that focal point. And again, me being me, I'm just going to do the cheats way. I'm just going to glue over my pocket and then lay that down. Just give that a really good amount of glue. And I should have used my glue book because now I've got glue all over the surface. So typical of me. Just check that again. Yeah, so I just want to lay that just down there like so. And just give that a really good burnish so that everything meets everything. And I'm just going to leave that to dry off really well while we do the other pockets and then I'll come back and trim that out in a little while. Yeah, so that's going to look quite pretty as our pocket there. Alright, just get rid of some of this stickiness. Alright, so I'm going to bring the folio back in now and I'm going to stick down these pockets that, um, that we made. Um, so firstly, this is the diagonal one that we've just papered. So I'm just going to stick that. Now this here is your opening of the envelope here. So obviously you want to keep it on that side of your opening. And to glue down all my pockets, I'm going to use um, the Helmers. I've got the fabric glue which I find to be just as good as the, um, the 45, I think it is. Um, yeah, the 450. I've just almost run out of that one. So, um, it's a tuck, so you want to keep this side open without, without putting any glue on. And I'm just going to run just a nice fine bead just down the side of where I've stitched it. Just like that. And then I'm just going to lay that down in that area. Just like so. This glue dries off really fast too. So that, that's always a plus in my books. And just at this stage, if there's anything seeping out, just wipe it off now because it comes away fairly good if you're using this glue. Okay, so that's our corner pocket. There's our flip, which we've got a little tag in there. Um, embellishing wise, I would come back and embellish these 
but just in today's video I won't have time. That flips out like that. I've got a little tuck spot there and then we have our first side where we've papered up our first pocket um, and then we've got the five and a half inch pocket here to create our second and our four and a half inch there to create our third. So I tend to come down from my from this section here, I tend to come down about two inches and that it's at the two inch mark approximately that I kind of lay my first pocket down. Let's get this ruler out of the way. So around about there. Now before I lay my pockets down, before I glue them, if you're going to sew, this is you'd want to sew an ink before you lay them down. Um, you don't have to sew, it looks just as pretty without the sewing. But yeah, I just, um, I, I do sew. So we've got our little flaps here for the pockets that we made and I'm just going to put a nice amount of glue on those flaps. And I'm just going to lay that down and I want to try and keep it as close over to this edge as I can. We've got our three score lines in the middle, we've got our six, six inch centre and then an eighth of an inch on either side. But this is where we're going to sew the insert, the junk journal insert in. So I want to kind of keep that channel quite clear. So come down about your two inches and then yeah, try and keep that really free of that channel and just lay it down as straight as you can. And I just give that a good, a good burnish. And because we've created those, because we um, cut those channels at the back, it gives the pocket a nice, yeah, a, a good amount of room in there. Uh, then with the second journal card, we, I'm going to line that up with my bottom row um, from, of the bottom of the, the folder. And I'm just again going to do that with the uh, helmers, <clears throat> just like we did a minute ago. Again, keeping it away from that channel but just lining it up as best you can to the first pocket that you just put down. I'm going to keep as much of these strings out the way as possible. I'll just give that a bit of a bit of a burnish on there. Like so and that's your first side completed. So you've got a top pocket here which runs the full length of the folder so that's excellent if you've got really long tags or you you wanted to put some sort of flip journaling card that will go right down then you've got a second pocket which goes down the five and a half inches a third pocket that goes down the four and a half inches and then we've got this um, one here with which I've made just a little tuck spot in there and then there's a tinier tuck spot in the front in here, like so. Flip it over and then we've got um, the diagonal side, the diagonal, yeah, side pocket, which is a, a tuck spot. And then we've got this full area here for journaling cards or coffee stain paper or note, you know, um, grungy notebooks. And then as this flips over, we've got this, a spot for a tag. Now if you wanted, you could even make this a pocket. You could you could put another pocket on here so you could have a pocket and then that pocket. All right, so we'll go back over onto this side and we're just gonna exactly do what we did there and lay these two pockets down. These are the ones we made in the last video and I have gone ahead and I've machine stitched around them um, prior to coming on camera. So again, we want to keep away from this center channel here. So we want to try and stick it as far to this side as possible and just line it up with that first pocket that you laid down. And again, just with the glue, with the helmet's glue again, I'm just going to give it a, a nice bead. Not, not excessive amount of glue on these because this, this glue is quite good in the sense that it, it, it adheres well and quickly. Um, so yeah, just but a nice amount so that you know it's not going to come away. So that's that one. And again, keeping away from the middle channel, lining it up with that 
other pocket on the other side, just lay it down like so. Give it a good burnish. And then you come in with this one here and do exactly the same thing. Will so you come down? Line it up with the bottom of your folder and the and the, this second pocket here that we that we just did. <clears throat> and just be aware of if you're if you're a sewer and you've got your strings. No, well that doesn't really matter because you won't see those anyway. And yeah, just lay it down, line it up with the pocket that you've just placed down and keeping it level with this one over on the other side. And just give that a good burnish. Like so. so again we've got a pocket and a pocket and a pocket we've got our larger journal um, a larger business size envelope which we papered up with the window in there um, that flips over now we're going to attach here this uh, diagonal side pocket that we just did before so I just simply just cut around that Actually, I won't attach it in this video because I do want to sew around it and I can't sew on camera anymore because my machine is on the other side of the room. But I can do this and ink it up and just place it down so that you can see it. So it's going to sit there like so. And I'm just going to put a bit of ink on that. Oh, what a day it was. My youngest daughter, she's oh, done something to her back, a disc bulge, they reckon. And we've spent the last eight hours in the hospital. So it was a very full day. I don't know, it breaks your heart when you it breaks your heart when your kids are, are not well, you know. Anyway, so um I instead of putting placing that down at this stage I just want to come back in and machine sew that so I will leave that and do that off camera now on this flippy bit here this envelope I just wanted to show you I cut the notch I don't know if you can see that I cut the notch out um, with my hole punch so yeah I'm just going to go ahead and do that now and again I'm just going to eyeball it I find it's better to cut your notches and things like that after you have papered the um after you've placed your paper down oh, I think I really need to get a new hole punch soon that one is not sharp anymore I'm just giving that a bit of ink and then again I haven't got my tags made up yet but um well, if it's gonna play the game yeah so that's our um, tag tuck there and then we've got our corner one uh, our diagonal corner diagonal opening pocket we've got this big section here and when I feed whatever I put in there you'll be able to see it in the window so I'm assuming I'm going to put a nice big journal card in there and that is the ephemera uh, holder folio part of it done I think they're a great idea there's a lot of room in there for a lot of ephemera in, in ones that I've done before, I've managed easily to get six large tags, and I do quite large tags. So you can actually get three in, a, in each pocket. And up the top here is really deep, so you can put a whole lot of stuff in there. Um, but yeah, your tucks are a good idea. Um, even like these ones, you'd be able to get a nice big tag into there or journal card. So they really will come in handy, and they're really nice as gifts as well. Um, if you loaded them full of ephemera for someone, it's really, really a nice idea. So now I'm going to get onto the um, the journal insert, and I really have. I just had a, a piece of leftover Manila folder, and I've just kind of measured it up. You could go. I've sort of kept mine. I've got about a half an inch from top to bottom, a quarter of an inch, but you could go the full length if you wanted to. 
but yeah I'm just using that as my journal cover and I'm going to paper that one up with an, um, a page pages from the kit again but I've just kept the same I'm going to do the front and the back in the same patterned paper so I think we'll use that one there because that's a very pretty one but I have just basically gone through my coffee dyed paper and some note paper and I've just picked random coffee stain I think that I will keep this one if either a naked journal or just slightly embellished I'm not going to put a lot of um, pockets and tucks and things like that within it because we've already got so much going on within the folio that's creating bulk and then by the time you put um, you know your junk journal in you're going to have bulk again so I think I will keep it fairly naked and I'm just going to fold them over most of these are like a, a pro approximate A4 sizes so I'm just going to fold them over but we will have to trim trim some off to to fit inside the cover and I've just picked a couple of oddly sized pages because I think that's really nice to add a bit of interest I've got some French text book page there and I've got some German that's a full book page there and I think I've just picked 10 sheets because then 10 sheets turns into 20 pages and I think if I get my formula right 20 pages turns into like 40 writing surfaces so there really is enough um, enough in there with 20 pages so the, the, the height fits really well but it's just the end so I think if we trim off from the cover into there it's about about a quarter of an inch but I think if we trim off a half an inch on each piece then I think that will fit nicely inside the journal so a half an inch is around about there so I'm just going to go ahead and trim a half an inch off the length of each page if my cutter will actually cut <clears throat> One. Mm. Must have a blunt spot right there. I don't need to trim those three. Got some graph paper. I'm just trim that off. And you could use any paper. I'm just choosing coffee stain, but you could add some scrapbooking patterned papers into there. You can put down some digital prints um, throughout your little junk journal booklet. Yeah, it's it's really up to yourself what you want to put inside it. I'm just going for coffee dye because I really <clears throat> I really just like. There's a lot going on within the folio in the in the respective pattern. And so I just thought to keep um, to keep the junk journal coffee dye would would be nice. just check that that actually will fit inside our cover and yeah that fits nicely so then I just I just go through my stack and I just burnish the, the folds in my paper really well to really give it a really good burnish just to make that nice nice and tight through the part that you want to sew together and then I just basically lay my papers in the order that I like them to be 
and, uh, and these aren't very exciting so they don't really have to go in any particular order German text in there. Put some more there. Uh, one thing to remember if you are using, if you know, and, and we probably all know this because I know that you guys are not novices where it comes to junk journaling and things like that. But yeah, it's just good to, once you've laid all your papers in your signature, it's just good to go back through it if you're using patterned papers just to make sure that you've got everything up the right way so yeah it's just a small journal but you know that's a, that's a nice size it's that's lovely just as some some journaling space within there and then when you fold that in it's not going to bulk it up too badly so that's i like that so that's 20 pages 20 a4 pages cut down um and we've taken about a half an inch off the edge of each page Alright, so now I'm going to um, put some paper down on the cover, on the covers of the junk journal. Um, ruler is handy. And I'm just going to just tear off these areas, the print area, where it leaves the white, the white edge. And this one I am, I'm not going to measure as much as I'm going to place it down. I'm not just going to glue it straight down. So I really want this as, as my image. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to lay that down and just grab my ruler. And hopefully I'm straight. And just take that top bit off like so. And then again on the side, I'm just going to check that I'm straight. And I'm just going to line that top and bottom up like that. And just rip that. So that's our front section, like so. So I'm just going to put a bit of ink down on this page here. Just keep my eye on the time. I've got 10 minutes left on the video. I really want to get myself a new recording device that records past 30 minutes because you really can't get a lot done, or I can't get a lot done in 30 minutes. So, but you know, that just goes in the wish list and hopefully one day it will be a realization. Right, so I'll take those out and I'm just going to, with my glue stick, I'm just going to lay that down and again I'm just using glue stick because it's um, paper to paper and I've printed these out on just your plain copy paper so it's a nice fine thin paper so glue stick in my opinion is enough to, to know that I have a did that really well. Right, so again just as closely as you can making sure you've got it up the right way. I just might turn that on the side and just lay it as close to the edge as I possibly can. Sorry if my head is in the way of the camera. And just lay that down like so. Give it a really good burnish. Like that. Now with my back piece, I want to paper it, but I want to bring it over just a little bit. Just to so that, well, you could do that. I don't think it matters if you didn't do that. And I retract what I said. I'm not going to do that because we are actually going to be sewing that in to the folio. So you won't actually see too much of that once it's inked and everything. I think that will be fine. All right, so I'll grab out my second piece of paper, which is exactly the same as the one we've just used. And again, I'll just rip off those inking perimeters. Okay. 
and I'm going to I'm going to use the same section of paper because I just think it's a very pretty piece. And so once again, I'm just going to lighten that up as best as I can and just cut, oh not cut, just rip with my ruler hoping that I'm straight. Like that. And I don't mind that rough edge. I think that looks nice. And once you ink it up, it sort of settles a slight bit anyway. And then we've got a little bit left over, which I'm thinking I'm going to use and make a masterboard with to um, make some of our ephemera with. So I'm just going to ink up these edges again. stick okay, like that and I find it easier if you turn it on the side now just that's one thing to look at which way that's our opening there, so we fold it so we want that to be like that. And on the side, line it up as best you can. And just lay it down and give it a good burnish just so that every, everything meets and there's no air bubbles in there. And I hadn't thought about front covers, uh, inside covers, so again, you would paper that up with something. I will probably try and find in my stash some sort of text to go on there. But for now, I'm just going to ink up the outside of the manila folder and down that spine piece. And yeah, we've time to wrap this up now. I won't say the signature on in on camera because it's not one of my most confident crafting adventures. <laughs> uh, there are many, many um, tutorials on YouTube about sewing signatures in and I will be using a three hole pamphlet stitch. So I do still find it a little tricky but I am learning. Alright, so that will be our journal cover. Our journal will be sewn into place and it will be sewn into the spine of our folio there, like so. And then um, I will decorate. I found this beautiful watercolour peony on the Graphics Fairy, which I love. So I think I will um, use that as my focal point on the front cover, but we'll come back and we'll embellish a little bit in another video. But yeah, basically we have our folio. So it's a um, manila folder and it opens up. We'll just run through it again. I'm going to machine stitch around here and then I will stick that one down there. So we have a flap in the front, which opens up to our diagonal side pocket with a great big area there for a journaling card. That then flips out into a window envelope, which will put a journaling card in the back that we can see through the front. Then you have three pockets here for all your ephemera. Then in the middle of the folio, there is the junk journal, just 20 simple pages of coffee dye, but you could do whatever you like. And that will be sewn in place with a three hole pamphlet stitch. And then we, we just uh, repeat again the front to the back. So we've got our first flip out. We have our diagonal tuck pocket. A massive area for a journaling card or coffee stain paper there. Flips out over here to we've got a tuck spot sewn in place there. And then a pocket and a pocket and a pocket. And just one thing I just want to mention before I leave.